Hi guys, it's me Jimmy and welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to do an endotracheal intubation since I'm currently rotating under the Department of Anesthesiology. However, please keep in mind that I'm doing all of this at home, so I'm going to be substituting a lot of materials and most of these materials are just DIY crafts. So please bear with me and let's begin. Doc, doc, we have a COVID-19 positive patient in ER for intubation. Patient has difficulty breathing, BP at 60 palpatory, heart rate 140 beats per minute, RR 30 CPM, O2 sat at 84%, and temperature at 40 degrees Celsius. What? Okay, let's go. Thank you, doc. Wear your PPE. After donning our PPEs, we first begin by assessing our patient for the possibility of a difficult intubation. In doing this, we recall the mnemonics morning, Lemon Laura. L. Look externally for any facial deformities, neoplasm, goiters, short necks, or burns. Next, we evaluate for the 332 rule. Ask the patient to open the mouth as wide as possible. It should be at least three finger breadth for the mouth opening. Next, ask the patient to look up for extension of the neck it should be three finger breadth from the mentum to the hyoid bone and then two finger breadth from the hyoid bone to the thyroid cartilage. Letter M. Check the malampati score to assess the oropharyngeal space. Ideally, the patient should be at your eye level. Ask the patient to open wide again and stick out their tongue. O. Obstruction. Check for any obstructions in the oral cavity or in the neck for any masses or hematomas. N. Neck mobility. This is assessed by measuring the sternomental distance. Let the patient fully extend the neck and measure from the chin up to the sternal notch. A sternomental distance of less than 12.5 cm is associated with a difficult intubation. After assessing the patient, let's now prepare the materials. I'm going to be showing you two different mnemonics, MAIDS and SALT PS. First, MAIDS. M. Monitors. Prepare the cardiac monitor and the pulse oximeter. A for airway equipments. This includes the endotracheal tube, the silet, the laryngoscope, the bag valve mask, nasopharyngeal and oropharyngeal airways, and laryngeal mask airways. I for IV fluids. Since our patient is hypotensive with a BP of 60 palpatory, this is important to improve the patient's hemodynamic status. D for drugs. We usually give both an anesthetic and a neuromuscular blocker for patients for intubation. However, since the patient is hypotensive, a neuromuscular blocker is enough to relax the muscles of the patient and to prevent worsening of hypotension. So for this patient, we will be giving intravenous succinylcholine at 1.5 mg per kilogram. And lastly, S for suction catheter and machine. The other mnemonic is salt PS, so these are for the materials that should be by your bedside during intubation. S for the suction catheter, A for airway which includes the nasopharyngeal, oropharyngeal, and laryngeal mask airways, L for the laryngoscope, T for the tube, so choose the appropriate endotracheal tube for your patient. P for plaster, which is used to secure the endotracheal tube after intubating, and S for stethoscope to listen for the breath sounds. Now, let's properly position our patient for intubation. Ideally, the patient should be in a sniffing position. Place a towel or a pillow under the head of the patient. This allows the lower neck to flex. After that, allow the patient to fully extend the head. With this position, you obtain a good line of vision since the oral, pharyngeal, and laryngeal axis are in line. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, intubation of COVID-19 patients can bring risk to the healthcare workers. Because of this, aerosol box were made in order to protect them from aerosolized droplets. Now let's perform the basic airway procedures. First, suction the secretions vomitus that may obstruct the patient's airway. Next, perform a chin lift and jaw thrust maneuver in order to displace the tongue anteriorly. You do this by tilting the patient's head back by pushing down on the forehead. 
Next, you pull down on the mandible using the index finger and the middle finger. Next, it is important to pre-oxygenate the patient prior to intubation to allow the patient to have reserve oxygen. A bag valve mask with an airtight seal is used for this pre-oxygenation. An airtight seal is done by using the CE grip. The thumb and the index fingers create a C over the bag valve mask while the other three fingers are under the mandible and pulling up. So let the patient breathe with 100% oxygen for about 3 to 5 minutes. Next, you can maintain a patent airway using either an oropharyngeal airway, the nasopharyngeal airway, or a laryngeal mask airway. Ensure that you have the proper size for the patient. The tips of your instrument must coincide with the angle of the mandible and the entry point. Ensure that the patient has been given with the muscle relaxant succinylcholine prior to the insertion of these instruments. If the patient's oxygen status is not improving, we proceed with the advanced airway using direct laryngoscopy and endotracheal intubation. If the patient's time of previous ingestion is not known, perform a Celdix maneuver in order to prevent aspiration of gastric contents. Make sure to check the patency of the cuff by inflating the pilot balloon. Once confirmed, deflate. Position the thumb and the index finger of the gloved right hand on the right mandibular and maxillary premolars. Fully open the mouth with scissored motion. Hold the laryngoscope with your left hand and insert the blade along the right corner of the mouth and sweep the tongue to the left. Advance the tip of the blade towards the vallecula until the glottis opening is visualized. Remember, we should avoid pushing on the maxillary teeth. In order to avoid this, the wrist must be in a rigid position and wrist motion must be avoided. Insert the endotracheal tube at the right corner of the mouth and guide the tip towards the glottis opening. Advance the tube further by increments of 2 cm until the cuff is about 3 to 4 cm beyond the vocal cords. Handle the endotracheal tube with a pencil grip. Once in position, remove the laryngoscope. The tube should be about 21 to 22 cm in. In order to secure the tube within the trachea, inflate the cuff with about 10 cc of air using the syringe. Once done, remove the stylet. Attach the tube to the bag. Confirm the proper placement of the tube using 5-point auscultation of the lungs and the epigastrium. There must be equal breath sounds on both lung fields and absent gurgling sounds in the epigastrium. Also observe for equal chest rise and monitor the CO2 levels using the capnograph. And lastly, Anchor the endotracheal tube at the right side of the mouth using the plaster. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a thing or two about how to do an endotracheal intubation. If you liked it, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Comment down below any more suggestions that you want me to teach you. So that's it. I'm Jimmy, and see you on the next one. Bye!